Hi, I'm Anna, designer advocate at Figma, and I'm so excited to show you how you can use Figma Make to turn your ideas into high fidelity functioning prototypes fast with AI. Let's dive into seeing what this looks like in practice. Here I have a design file with some of my different screens for the World Peace online shopping experience. I wanna bring these into Figma Make so that I can create a prototype for some upcoming user research sessions. But before I bring it into Figma Make, I wanna first make sure that I'm setting myself up for success. So because you're pasting your Figma design frames directly into Make, it's able to reference a lot of the details around how your designs are structured. So the first thing I wanna check is if I'm utilizing auto layout to make sure that my designs are responsive and well-structured. I also wanna check that my layers are named because that's gonna help create a shared language between myself and Figma Make. Make sure that I'm removing any unnecessary or hidden layers that I don't want Make to reference when generating my prototype. So looking at my design here, uh, I noticed that this content doesn't have auto layout automatically applied to it. Um, it's pretty much staying static when I'm resizing that screen. So if I wanna quickly apply auto layout, I can refer to the quick actions and utilize the AI suggest auto layout. So that went ahead and already applied auto layout and you can see it's now responsive. I also know that I have a couple of layers in here that aren't properly named. So let's go back to actions and use the rename layers AI feature. And you can see it's gonna go through and rename 11 of my unnamed layers. And then lastly, looks like I have this frame that's not really serving any purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So now it looks like my design's in a pretty good state. So let's go ahead and create a new make. I'm gonna go to file, new make, and I'm gonna go back to my design and just copy and paste that frame into the prompt box. And let's give it a brief description around what I'm trying to build here. So I'm just gonna say, um, implement this design for the produce product screen for the world P's mobile grocery shopping app and make it interactive. Cool. Before I send my prompt, you'll also notice here, besides attaching your Figma elements, you can also choose to attach an image. Um, there's also an option here to select a library. So when I click on that, I can see all the different libraries that I have access to. Um, whether it is through libraries being a part of the entire organization or to specific teams that I'm in. And these are also all libraries that have been uh, specifically extracted for use in Figma make files, whether by myself or by a teammate. So here I'm just gonna pick this foundations um, library file. And then to the right here, I can see these options for me to navigate to edit styles or edit guidelines. When I go to edit styles, that's gonna take me to the global CSS file. This is what was generated when that foundations library file was extracted for use in Figma Make. And basically this extraction is gonna take my styles for my typography, color, spacing, and bring those into this global CSS library file. So if there's any stylistic changes that I wanna make, I can directly make edits in the file here, but I'm gonna keep it the way it is for now. In addition, you'll see here there's an option to edit guidelines, which will navigate me to that guidelines.md file. And you can think of this as a free form text file where you can add any kinds of guidelines that you want. So here I can add some guidelines like, uh, you know, add press dates to all buttons. And maybe let's, um, let's say, you know, optimize for a mobile screen size. So basically anything that's not covered in your designs that you're pasting into Figma Make or anything that's not covered in the style extraction, uh, you can add those additional details to the guidelines.md file for any kinds of rules that you want Figma Make to reference when generating your prototype. All right, so I've got my design pasted in. I have my prompt, I've selected which library styles I wanna reference, 
And then I've added a couple of guidelines here. So let's go ahead and start building with Figma Make. So while it's working, you can see it's starting to think through um, what are all of the things that it needs to include in this design based on all the information that I've given it. And, and it's going to start building that by implementing code. Let's fast forward uh, to when this is done so we can take a look at what that looks like. All right, so now that my prototype is done generating, on the left side, you can see uh, Figma Make is listing out all the different things that it's built out. So it's added some interactivity, like the ability to add to cart or favorite items. Um, we can also see that it referenced my guidelines around making sure that it's sized to fit in a mobile container. And I can directly interact with my prototype in that preview. So I can see here, I can add elements to the cart, I can heart. We also have some sorting capabilities, so I can sort things alphabetically or by price. And I can also see here in the code panel, this is all the generated code that is powering that prototype that I can preview. To make any kinds of edits to my prototype, I can do this a couple of ways. You can always continue to write additional prompts, uh, but those generally take a bit longer. So for anything that is a smaller tweak, I recommend utilizing this point and edit tool. So I can select an element, uh, maybe it's the text here for instance, and let's just unbold that. And you can see it's not only edited the specific text layer that I've selected, but also all the other corresponding text layers with all my different product cards. If I want to adjust something else, like maybe um, spacing, I can do that as well. So you can see I can adjust my color background, my corner radius, and here's where I can access spacing. Um, and you know, maybe let's just update the padding a bit here. Let's make that eight pixels. And pretty much any edits that I make with the point and edit tool is going to be instantaneous. Looking back at my prototype, I notice that when I'm hovering over these hearts, they increase in size, but because we're designing for mobile, that kind of interaction doesn't really make sense. So because I can't edit this with the toolbar that pops up with point and edit, I can still select the element and then navigate to this go to source button, which is gonna take me to where that design element lives within the code. So let's check this out here. And then we've got this hover scale. I just want to go ahead and get rid of that because I want to remove that hover animation. Go back to preview. And now the hearts don't change size when I'm hovering over them. So yeah, any kinds of quick edits you wanna make to instantaneously change your prototype, utilize the point and edit tool or make those direct edits in code. Now that we've made a couple of tweaks, besides just previewing my prototype in the preview, up in the corner here, you can see that I can also switch the different device sizes if I wanna see what this looks like across different mobile sizes. Let's just keep it in custom for now. So far, I only have the first screen of my entire app implemented, so let's go ahead and add an additional screen to my prototype. So I'm gonna go back to my design file and let's next implement this product screen. So I'm just gonna take that, copy, paste it in, and then I will say, um, implement this design for the product detail screen, uh, which users can navigate to after clicking on the product card in the produce screen. All right, let's go ahead, let that cook, and then I will fast forward again. All right, so it's done generating. Let's see if it's implemented those product detail screens. I'm gonna click on the garlic clove page and yep, it's gone ahead and implemented the new screen. One thing I wanna make sure I also point out is if there's anything that you can't edit through the point and edit tool or through editing the code panel, 
You can still use the point and edit tool to select the particular elements that you want to change in a follow-up prompt. So that's just another way to specify the specific thing that you want Make to focus on. And if you do generate while referencing the styles of a library, you can't change which library styles you're referencing. If for whatever reason you ever wanna switch it, you'll have to make a new Figma make file uh, and select that different library there. So yeah, that's kind of the gist of how you go about building a prototype. In cases where you want to build prototypes with multiple screens, I definitely recommend that you take the approach that I did where you start one screen at a time. It really helps make sure that you are uh, not confusing Make with too much information. It also helps make your generations faster and more accurate to the designs that you are attaching. And you'll also notice that within version history, if for whatever reason you're not satisfied with a generation, you can always choose to go back to prior versions by clicking on the restore to this version button. With that, I'm going to quickly fast forward to us taking a look at the final prototype. All right, so here we are at my full prototype. I've got all of my different interactivity, different screens, I've got my cart. There's micro interactions and there's also logic built in, like I can have my little interactive input fields where I put in information. And now I feel like this is ready for me to share with my teammates. So if I wanna do that, I can go ahead, click the share button and invite others on my team to view this prototype. And when I'm ready to use that in those user research sessions to make it easier to share with participants, I can also go ahead and publish my prototype to a website for others to visit as well. With Viva Make, you can go from an idea to interactive prototype faster than ever before. Whether it's just testing out some different micro animation transitions, building a full-fledged prototype, or just seeing if an idea that you have makes sense, it's so much easier for you to bring your ideas to life with Figma Make. We look forward to seeing all the different things that you guys build and hearing your feedback and are so excited for some of the upcoming updates that we'll be launching in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm.